A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Mathematicians, welcome back to another video. You might have seen my incredibly unrigorous engineering clock in the background for a while by now, but did you know that there's actually an incredibly unrigorous engineering watch available now over on STEM Merch? Check it out, link in the description. It's definitely worth getting yourself one day. Amazing. Now, a while ago I posted this denesting radicals Cambridge interview question and I was not forcing, so looking over the internet a tiny little bit more for more Cambridge interview questions and there's actually some kind of archive or collection of those and this one piqued my interest because it's nice and easy, uh, simple and spicy, very short video but um, I find it very interesting and I'm going to present two ways to you. The one being my own method you could say very analysis like and very elegant in my opinion and after that I'm going to present your second method which is the noob method which you find online if you look for um, solving problems of the sort comparing a to the b power to c to the d power and I hope you are going to enjoy this video now we are going to dive right in. So for my method what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at difference of those two square roots or those two roots not square roots only one of those is a square root. Let me elaborate on this time a little bit. Namely what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at the cube root of 3 minus the square root of 2 or the other way around because what we can do is we can actually find out if this difference is greater or less we don't know yet than 0. If it were greater or less than 0 if we were to find this fact out one of either then what we could do is we could add the square root of 2 on both sides giving us that either the cube root of 3 is greater or strictly less than the square root of 2 okay in the process and this is our mission right here and it's a very very elegant way if we take a look at basically um, the difference of two squares which is going to be very helpful here. Now I would like to elaborate on this a tiny little bit more too because we can actually get rid of one of the roots that we have right here by very sneakily and analysis like expanding this kind of factor right here this this number by a number one meaning we are going to expand the fraction by a number one and the number one is going to be represented by something of the sort a over a and this a is going to be exactly the conjugate of what we got here namely the cube root of three plus the square root of two let me expand this okay we are going to multiply this by the cube root of three plus the square root of two divided by the very same thing I hope you can see that we didn't change anything on the original difference it's still the same cube root of three plus the square root of two. Now the very cool thing is that we got a difference of squares now and difference of squares can make square roots disappear which is our mission right here. Namely we got something of the form a minus b times a plus b. Now if we were to factor, uh, multiply everything out we are going to get a squared where a is the cube root of three minus b squared where b is the square root of two. Meaning in the process what we're going to get and we didn't change anything on the original difference which is a really cool thing very elegant we're going to get the cube root of 3 squared minus the square root of 2 squared divided by all of the other stuff this really isn't of any interest it's, it's just here for fun basically okay just to look at now like mentioned before squares let square roots disappear meaning the square root squared is just going to be the argument in itself. Also one nice property of roots in general is that they are being defined as exponents and if our argument right here is positive then what we can say is that the cube root of 3 squared is the same as the cube root of 3 squared and 3 squared is nothing other than 9 leaving us overall with the cube root of 9 minus 2 divided by the cube root of 3 plus the square root of 2. And now we are going to use a very, very sneaky analysis argument. Namely, one cool thing about nth roots in general is that they are strictly increasing. If we take a look at the cube root function, for example, it's going to start in zero. Okay, it's, it's not Lipschitz continuous, if I'm not mistaken, but we can start at zero and we can go upwards right here. And if we now take a look at, for example, the sequence of uh, natural numbers in here as being arguments, then if we take a look at the cube root of xn, you are going to notice that since our function is strictly increasing that the cube root of x n plus 1 is actually always greater this is by definition the case for strictly increasing functions than, than the cube root of x n. Now cool thing is next to our 9 
with a smaller number as the argument is actually a perfect cube. And if we were to get the cube root of a perfect root, we could uh, of a perfect cube, we could eliminate just a cube root and a, um, to the third power exponent that we got. Now, what is the closest? Um, a perfect cube that we got next to 9. I mean it's 8. 8 is nothing other than 2 to the third power. And this is good because um, 8 is actually less than our um, 9. Meaning overall what we got is that this part that we have right here is strictly greater than the cube root of 2 to the third power. Okay, Minus 2 divided by the cube root of 3 plus the square root of 2. And like mentioned a second ago our cubes are going to make our cube roots vanish, meaning we are going to get something of the form 2 minus 2 divided by something nice to look at. And 2 minus 2 by definition is 0. 0 over something positive is going to give us 0. And this already ends our argument. What we got is that our original difference that we got here is strictly greater than 0. What that means also is, okay, let me put this here as the final conclusion, is that the cube root of 3 is strictly greater than the square root of 2. I hope you can see where this came from. If we were to subtract square root of 2 on both sides, you are going to notice that we got the same order relation right here, with something being greater than 0. And this already ends the argument, and I think it's pretty elegant in my opinion. Now here comes the second method. It's, it's the noob method, you could say. Namely, what we are going to do is we are going to compare our square root of 2, once again, to our cube root of 3. We don't know which one is greater or less than the other. Right now, at least we are going to um, act like we don't know yet. Okay, but we know by now. Psh, don't tell anyone. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to rewrite our squares, or uh, our square roots and our cube roots a little bit, because like mentioned before, they are being defined as just exponents, fractional exponents, basically. Meaning, square root is nothing but 2 to 1 half power, greater or less than 3 to the 1 third power. And now what we want to do is, since all those steps we did are equivalent, we can also actually exponentiate both sides to a certain exponent and still keep this equivalence relation going. And now the very cool thing is that actually 2 and 3 have a nice least common multiple, meaning something that has the prime factorization 2 times 3. And if we were to exponentiate both sides by something of the form 2 times 3, which is nothing other than 6, we are going to cancel out the 2s and the 3s on this side. And then we are going to be left with something 2 to the natural number power, greater or less, we don't know, 3 to the something natural number power. Meaning what we are going to do is we are going to exponentiate both sides to the 6th power. And now 6 prime factorization is 2 times 3, meaning 2 and 2 are going to cancel out, leaving us overall with 2 to the third power, greater or less than, we don't know yet, but in a second, 3 to the, okay, 3 and 3 are going to cancel out, leaving us with 3 squared. And now it's pretty easy to guess which one is greater. Because um, 2 to the third power is nothing other than 8. And 8 is obviously less than 9, which is 3 squared. And well, now we can go back, this whole snack, this whole um, equivalent snack that we got, and we're going to arrive at the very same result. Like mentioned before, this right here is the noob method, and I don't believe that it's as elegant as the other method that I presented, but I hope you still did enjoy what you saw today. And if you did enjoy what you saw today, then you might as well enjoy the content of today's sponsor brand, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. And if you're not familiar with Brand yet, then I'm going to give you a short and spicy introduction. Brand is, in my opinion, one of the best online sources to learn new things. And by new things, I mean stuff like the things that we did today, mathematics. Or maybe you want to learn something about the behavior of a pendulum and maybe special cases like the double pendulum. This falls into the category of physics, chaos um, theory and also nonlinear dynamics. Or you want to learn something about Python programming, chemistry. No matter what you're striving for, Brilliant definitely has something up their sleeve for you. And by far one of the best things that Brilliant has to offer are their absolutely superb courses. And their course concept in itself is just very nice and, and very nice to look at too. Because if you've ever been on Brilliant before, you might know that they give you those very nice animations all over the place. They want to give you an intuition for what you are doing there right now. Want to learn something about Riemann integrals, but you can't really put your finger on why a Riemann integration has something to do with areas. Well, Brilliant is going to provide 
provides you with a very nice animation and very intuitive facts about splitting the area under a curve up into infinitely many rectangles with this nice animation um, plugged into it and then you are going to see oh this is why we have the area under a curve for example and this is just one of many examples and the whole geometry section is about um, dealing with animations tracking stuff around just overall it's very fun to play with and it's a very cool approach to learning new things online. And if this feels like it's something for you, if I sparked your interest with this little talk of mine, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, preand.org slash flamblemess. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Preand already, and the first 200 people to use the link get 20% of my annual premium subscription. And this is where the real fun begins, because the premium subscription is going to give you access to all the courses, unlimited community posts, etc. And it's just overall cool, because they are expanding their repertoire of courses each and every month, and you are never ever going to run out virtually um, of content over on their website. It's just absolutely amazing. I, I really love their website and I love that they are a sponsor of this channel. Very proud to be part of the brilliant family to be honest. And this basically concludes today's video. If you did enjoy what you saw today then yeah please subscribe to the channel. Support the channel on Patreon or maybe on Stemmerge or my personal Teespring shop to buy stuff that I wear in the video here. And up until next video I wish you guys a flamble day. <sighs> See ya, please stay safe and the usual ciao I say at the end. <laughs>